I had only been back to visit. And, and I got into uh, Buddhism in Japan, uh, in the Zen practice. I lived there for a year, and then I went to Thailand, and then I became a Theravadan monk for a while, too. And then ever since then, I've been practicing Buddhism. And up until Michael suggested it, it never occurred to me that maybe I, I should go to Ireland, go back indeed to my hometown, Belfast, and uh, do, bring some practice there. You know, when I was growing up in, in Belfast, it, it, it was under quite harsh conditions. Um, like I remember when I was about 10 going to England and seeing signs outside of pubs uh, that would say, no Irish or dogs allowed. You know? like we, when I was growing up, when we went to London, we went to the Irish Quarter because that would really be the only place we would be allowed to stay. Uh, and then in, in Belfast, in Northern Ireland, through now would be like a 330 year history, uh, this division uh, between Catholic and Protestant. And so I grew up Catholic, which was a minority. And, and uh, and not surprisingly, the underprivileged minority um, and the oppressed minority. It's, uh, in, in the early part of the 20th century, there was a kind of a rebellion against the English occupation of Ireland, and it resulted in a peace treaty where Southern Ireland became independent and Northern Ireland stayed part of, of uh, Great Britain. And that was because the Protestant majority were strongly, strong, identified strongly with being part of Britain and, and the Catholic minority did not. As, as part of the history, uh, of Northern Ireland, at, at a certain point, the, the the Catholics had to give up their property, mostly their farms. It was kind of a punishment for supporting the, the wrong king in in England. You know, the Catholics supported the Catholic king, and he was defeated by the Protestant king, and they, this was a punishment. And then at that time the only people who owned property, this is the 1960s and 70s, only people who owned property could, um, could vote. And then somewhat inspired by Martin Luther King's nonviolent protests, there, there was a march from Belfast to Derry, which is across Northern Ireland to protest and, and to advocate for everyone being able to vote. And uh, seems nowadays, it seems like a reasonable enough request. Um, but it, as it started to gather momentum, the, the, it, it became, it seemed to become more of a threat to the established authorities and uh, at one point they decided they would, and then they would, they would bat and charge the marchers and disperse them. And then they would just come back together and march some more as the, the journey they were doing was about a hundred miles. And then at some point they decided that they would shoot them. And so they did. And, and um, and, and rather, and I think this is kind of like a worldwide consideration, you know, you, you use brute force to intimidate people into submission, and then it backfires, it turns them into, you know, a more radical 
approach. And that's what happened in Northern Ireland. Was for centuries, there, there, there's been a kind of a protest against the English occupation, often violent. And with, with, with that had more or less subdued until they shot these marchers. And, and then that sort of flared right up. And that was in 68. And I, and I grew up in a working class part of Belfast, uh, completely Catholic. The, 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 the more working class areas were more ghettoized. The, the Catholic area was completely Catholic. The Protestant area, working class area, was completely Protestant. And the Catholic area, through various discriminations, was quite impoverished. So, and, and that was the circumstances in which I grew up. And, and then, because the area I grew up was so radical, uh, when, when the troubles, as we call them, flared up, um, the area I was in was kind of like the epicenter of it. And um, like quite literally, it, a little bit mirroring of what's happened in Portland, where at that time the riots, the, the rioters commanded a certain area, probably about six or eight city blocks, and the priests, the police couldn't go into it. And then the whole um, The whole issue sort of grew very quickly. You know? the, the Catholics outraged by the shooting of nonviolent marchers um, became militant, very quickly uh, armed themselves, uh, and then started to uh, take actions against the, the police and then the army was brought over from England and it was against the police and the army. In the meantime, uh, the Protestants also created their own militias. And, and then the, it's um, sort of uneasy truths between Catholics and Protestants flared up into uh, the whole society of Northern Ireland becoming uh, just filled with mutual hostility. And then after about four years, 72, I left. And uh, I, 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 I did not want to, I mean, the way it seemed to me, it was either you're with us, you become part of the militant protesters, or you're against us. And I thought, well, I choose neither side, so I'll leave. And I did. And then, as I said, you know, I traveled a lot. I ended up living in Japan and then Thailand, came to the United States, came to San Francisco Zen Center. Uh, mid seventies, and then pretty much I've been here ever since. You know, I've had many roles here, including being the abbot. And so by that time, um, ninety nine, you know, I'd been at San Francisco Zen Center a couple of decades. Um, I was had been ordained in nineteen eighty. So I'd been practicing for quite a while. And, and so Michael uh, suggested this bearing witness retreat. And um, 